Um, so my name is uh, Dr. Matthew Malt. Uh, I'd first like to thank the organizers for allowing me to present my research today, and especially to Claire Dwoskin and Professor Schoenfeld. Um, so following on from Emma's work, uh, the research interest of our group was to understand what happens to the aluminum adjuvants at the site of injection, so especially with regards to cellular uptake. So for this purpose, I used a uh, monocytic T helper one cell line as a model, and using Lumagallion, which is a fluorescent molecular probe for aluminium, we were interested to see what happens to the adjuvant particles. So the first slide will cover uh, what, what I deem native cells. These are basically cells that are incubated in cell culture medium only and don't contain any alum aluminium adjuvants at this point. So the following fluorescence micrographs basically depict lumagallium fluorescence of cells in culture medium. Uh, these cells are prepared in section and then stained with the lumagallium for 24 hours. So the cells themselves, in the absence of any added adjuvant, produce no detectable fluorescence by the use of lumagallium. Uh, we use DAPI uh, as a marker of cell nuclei. So this is essentially our positive control for cells and it's also a control to ensure that we have cells in our sections. Uh, these channels are then merged, and overlaying of the bright field image basically shows that the cytoplasm is giving a dull fluorescence. So these are controls that show that no prominent fluorescence is produced from native cells, and it forms a control for the rest of the work I performed. So the following shows an electron micrograph of the same native cells, so cells grown in culture medium for 24 hours, and they're embedded using a spur resin embedding protocol, which is basically like an acrylic plastic. And we take sections at 100 nanometers and stain them with a negative stain. And using transmission electron microscopy, we can see an intact native cell here. Uh, it shows a cohesive uh, cellular cytoplasm, so a granular cellular cytoplasm, and a clear distinction of the cell nucleus. So this forms a good basis for the rest of the work in trying to understand do aluminum adjuvants enter cells. So following on from Emma's research, uh, we were interested in firstly assessing how AL hydrogel is taken into the cells. Uh, we tend to use the lower concentrations of the adjuvant. Um, so we're interested in this case, concentrations between 2.5 to 100 micrograms per mole of AL hydrogel. So these are, the, these are cells that have been co-cultured in the presence of AL hydrogel. And so we have 2.5, 25, 50 and 100 micrograms per mole of the adjuvant. Uh, the blue fluorescence is our cellular marker, and the orange fluorescence is that of Lumagallion. And we can now see a prominent uh, fluorescence emission signal, so a bright orange uh, fluorescent emission from the periphery of cells. Um, this shows that aluminum adjuvant particles are loaded into the cell, and overlaying of the bright field image shows that those particles are only internalized within the cell cytoplasm. So at every concentration range, our hydrogel is taken up into cells. It's only taken up into the cell cytoplasm. Uh, in, an interesting observation at the highest concentration of the adjuvant was the aluminum particles begin to become co-absorbed to the plasma membrane of the cell. So this suggests that the cells are so heavily loaded with our hydrogel that the remaining particles are only able to be co-absorbed to the cell membrane. So this slide provides a summary uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail to the panel on the left. It basically shows the individual channels, so lumagallion, DAPI fluorescence, the two overlaid, and finally the overlay of the bright field image to confirm that particles are internalized and that they're internalized within the membrane of the cell. So al hydrogel is found localized within the cell cytoplasm only. Um, those aluminium-based adjuvant particles found were found to be one micron in size, and their size was fairly consistent. So by size, I'm referring to the maximum outer diameter of those particles. Uh, Al hydrogel is found readily internalized at all concentrations of the adjuvant investigated. And interestingly, at the highest concentration of 100 micrograms per mole, Al hydrogel is found co-localized to the plasma membrane of cells. Uh, the next stage in the analysis was to perform transmission electron microscopy. So unlike native cells, so cells grown in the absence of the aluminum adjuvant, in the presence of Al hydrogel, we can now see the particles of Al hydrogel are internalized. Um, at lower magnification, the co-localization of aluminum with inside cells uh, showed membrane-like vesicles. Uh, these suggested the presence of autophagosomes within cells. 
So higher magnifications were used, and using higher magnifications, we could see a crystalline morphology of the adjuvant, and also the evidence of a membrane. So this suggested the presence of a membrane of an autophagosome, which would suggest that these particles were taken into cells via autophagy. Uh, interestingly, no particulate material could be found in the nucleus of the cells. So these results confirmed the fluorescence microscopy in that our hydrogel is loaded into the cytoplasm of cells, and it's approximately one micron in size. The next step was to assess the cellular uptake of adjuphos, so an aluminium hydroxyphosphate-based adjuvant, over the same concentration range. So lumogallium was used, again, as a sensitive molecular probe for aluminium. And again, we find that the aluminium adjuvant is internalized within the cytoplasm of cells. Interestingly, however, at the lower concentrations, we still see that the adjuvant is loaded into the cell cytoplasm. At higher concentrations of the adjuvant, however, the cellular uptake is found to be diminished or reduced. Uh, this may be a result of cytotoxicity, as in there's less viable cells able to interact with those particles of adjuphos, and they're thereby able to internalize the particles within the preparations. Uh, those particles found were generally more amorphous, and although particle size measurements were difficult, um, they were generally around the same size as our hydrogel, of around one micron in size. So the message from this slide is that adjuphos is internalized, but at higher concentrations, that the amount of adjuvant internalized is diminished or reduced. So in summary, adjuphos, as with our hydrogel, is also found localized in the cell cytoplasm only. And discrete aluminium-based adjuvant particles were found. However, their identifications were sometimes difficult. So the staining suggested the presence of amorphous aluminium, possibly Al3+. Adjuphos was found readily internalized at lower concentrations of the adjuvant. However, at higher concentrations, approaching 50 and 100 micrograms per mL, the uptake was less pronounced, suggesting potential cytotoxicity. Another interesting observation in the presence of adjuphos was the presence of extracellular genetic material. So as a consequence of using DAPI fluorescence, I noticed in some of the sections that there was extracellular staining. So for example, in the magnified insert, we can see what appears to be an intact cell nucleus. Um, however, the arrows show that there's some kind of DAPI positive material, so extracellular genetic material within these sections. And this was only observed in the presence of adjuphos. So uh, this may suggest that the diminished uptake of adjuphos was a consequence of potential cytotoxicity within these assays. So transmission electron microscopy was again used. And again, we can see the loading of dense, uh, dense positively stained particulates of the adjuvant contained solely within the cytoplasm of T helper 1 cells. Interestingly, the presence of vesicles or endosomes was less pronounced on these sections. So using a higher magnification, we can see positively stained material. This is likely to be aluminium, and we can also see some negative staining. This may be co-absorption of serum proteins, such as bovine serum albumin, which are present within the cell culture medium, but this is only speculative at this point. Uh, we can see evidence of an endosome-like structure, however, it's far less defined uh, than for our hydrogel, and the presence of a membrane is also not present within this electron micrograph. So as a comparison, we did also look at the cellular uptake of the experimental adjuvant preparation, Imject Alum. Um, so an adjuvant composed of aluminium hydroxycarbonate and magnesium hydroxide. So over the same concentration range, we again see internalization of particles of Imject Alum. So we can see luma gallium reactive material that's loaded into the cytoplasm of cells. So this is present at 2.5, 25, and also 50 micrograms per mL. Interestingly, those particles of inject alum found were generally larger in size. So size measurements showed that the outer diameter of these particles was two microns in size. Uh, approaching higher concentrations of the adjuvant, uptake was found, but again, it was less pronounced. Unlike our hydrogel that was found to, readily internal, to be readily internalized at all concentrations analyzed. Uh, so in summary, inject alum is also found co-localized within the cytoplasm of THP1 cells only. Uh, those particles are typically larger in size, so approximately two microns. Imject is found internalized between 2.5 to 50 micrograms per mL of the adjuvant, but its uptake is less pronounced at the higher concentrations. 
So for transmission electron microscopy of cells co-cultures in the presence of imject alum, large, positively stained, dense particulates of the aluminium adjuvant were found loaded into the cytoplasm of T helper 1 cells. So at higher magnifications of 60,000 times and greater, we can see positively stained, dense aggregates of aluminium. Uh, another interesting observation in this image is the presence of potentially microcrystalline material. And this led us to believe that this might be magnesium hydroxide, which is the crystalline part of imject alum, uh, with the amorphous plate-like structures being more likely to be observed following the results from Dr. Shardler's uh, particle size measurements and uh, electron microscopy work. Um, so the next logical step in the research was to try and, to try and address not only the internalization of an aluminium adjuvant, but it was also interesting for us to ascertain the cellular uptake of an antigen. Um, so for this purpose, I used a model peptide antigen called beta amyloid. Beta amyloid is amyloidogenic, which means that it misfolds to form amyloid fibrils, and it's been implicated in the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease. So within these studies, I formed amyloid fibrils in cell culture medium and stained them with thioflavin T. This dye is specific for a beta-pleated cheek conformation, so it will only identify fibrillar material inside cells. These cells were co-cultured with the amyloidogenic peptide for 24 hours, and then whole cells were stained using thioflavin T. And using fluorescence microscopy, we can see the presence of a fibrillar peptide antigen within T helper 1 cells. Uh, this identification was shown to provide a positive identification of the adjuvant with inside T helper 1 cells. Following on from this analysis, the next stage was to ascertain whether a peptide antigen and an aluminium adjuvant could be found co-localized within the cytoplasm of T helper 1 cells or within T helper 1 cells in general. So these images uh, depict fluorescence micrographs, and within these preparations, alhydrogel was used as our model adjuvant. Uh, this is owing to its, its easy identification or it being readily identifiable via lumagallium fluorescence. Uh, you'll notice that the staining for the peptide is blue, whereas in the previous slide, the staining is green. Uh, the reason for this is I use uh, different fluorescence filter channels which separate the lumagallium fluorescence by a bright orange fluorescence emission, and also the fluorescence of our amyloid peptide. So upon merging these two channels, uh, a purple coloration was observed. So what we found was the co-localization of a model peptide antigen and also its adjuvant within T helper 1 cells. The bright field image that's been overlaid here is to show that they're both contained within the cytoplasm of T helper 1 cells. So these results are currently prepared uh, for publication. So the next uh, consideration for us is whilst aluminium-based adjuvants might be able to be taken up into T helper 1 cells, um, we are interested in what happens to the cells, so the cytotoxicity of the cells. So do aluminium adjuvants pose toxicity to the cell preparations being used? Uh, so I'd like to introduce Dr. Emma Shardlow back to the stage uh, to talk about some of the cytotoxicity measurements she's done. <laughs> 